Good morning, BTC kids. So glad you could join us here. Today, we're gonna to continue talking about the Holy Spirit. And this is what Jesus promised. The Holy Spirit would come. And the Holy Spirit wants to teach us that we are truly God's children, that he's brought us into his family. Regardless of how we feel, we're still his kids. In fact, in Romans, a book written by the Paul, who we're gonna be talking about in a couple weeks, said, for you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. We're not supposed to be fearful, but we have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Abba is another word for daddy. Listen to this interesting story about adoption and about how somebody was brought into a family. It has to do with us being adopted into God's family. Listen well. The Apostle Paul prized his personal relationship with God. It was extraordinary to him that the creator of the universe would step in and adopt him to be his very own son. And it was not because he had done anything to attract such favor, but simply because it pleased God and because of his tender mercies. As Paul wrote about adoption, his thoughts were for those who did not truly understand the Father's love. Imagine a young boy, penniless, rejected, without a name and without a future. He is a beggar and an inconvenience to a society who regards him as a street rat. While scavenging for food one day in a dark corner of a busy street, he turns to observe a beautiful family. All he has ever desired is to have a mom and a dad to love and protect him, maybe sisters and brothers to play with, and the chance for a bright future but the dream moves on without even noticing. The young orphan continues his daily chore of searching out his next meal when he notices a well-dressed man approaching. This is clearly a man of great importance and power, and even in this prosperous community, he seems almost out of place. The boy hesitates for a moment, then turns to shrink into his corner. He takes two steps before he is stopped by the gentle hand of the stranger who says kindly, I would like to adopt you to be my very own son. Surely I am dreaming, the beggar thinks to himself. He is overwhelmed by the proposal, almost doubting the offer is real. How could a poor boy like himself become a part of this distinguished man's family? But it's true, however unbelievable. And the man takes the boy before a judge and begins the legal process of making him a member of his great family. The boy is now treated as a son. His hair is cut and his face is clean. He has new clothes on. He sits at the father's table and before him a banquet of food to eat. This is too wonderful, unlike anything he has ever experienced. The entire process is complete and the boy becomes the proud son of honor with all the privileges of sonship. He is dressed in the finest linens and dines on the finest foods. He is at long last part of a family who loves him as their own. He is overwhelmed by the generosity and love of his new father, amazed by his own good fortune, and filled with joy and hope for a bright future. The celebration continues as family and friends come from all over to meet their new beloved family member. The lives of the family and the life of the young beggar are changed forever. It may have been a story like this that was on the Apostle's mind when he wrote of the glorious mystery of adoption, how a person completely unrelated to God and his perfect holiness could be chosen as a child to inherit his vast riches. Paul knew the love of a father who was also king and creator of the universe. He enjoyed the belonging that came from being a part of the family of God. The Apostle Paul's life had been forever changed and he urged his readers also to be changed by the truth of a perfect father's love. Hi, boys and girls. That was an interesting story, huh? I can't relate to the idea of being adopted too much because I've always had my dad. However, some of you maybe have been adopted and you can really relate to that story. But I can relate to belonging. When I was about nine, 10 years old, 
I was playing with some friends and they climbed up a tree before me and we were having a great time. But I was still on the ground and didn't get up the tree in time and so they thought it would be fun to start pelting me with rocks. That was not fun. They were having a blast, but I was not having fun. In fact, I left that day very discouraged thinking, do I even want to hang out with these people? Are these really my friends? And that day they were not very friendly. So I didn't really feel like I belonged. So I understand that belonging and feeling like you're in a group of people that are gonna take care of you is really important. And that's what God wants for us as Christians. He wants you to belong to God's family, his family, and he wants to be our father. The Holy Spirit actually speaks to us and reminds us of this in good times and in bad times. So you can believe that you belong. Even sometimes if you feel lonely or lost or you don't belong, have that feeling of not belonging, you do. You will always belong to God's family. And if you ever wonder, just ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. The Holy Spirit's job, one of the things he does is reminds us that we are part of God's family and that our Heavenly Father cares about us. Now we have some questions for you. Hopefully you know the two answers. One, how can you become a child of God? I hope you know the answer to this one. If you don't, or if you were wondering about the answer to that one, listen carefully. You can become a child of God simply by turning to Jesus and saying, I believe you paid for my sin on the cross and you have forgiven me. That's what you need to do. And I hope you know that one. We've covered it quite a few times and that is the most important question I need for you to answer. How do you become a child of God? By believing that Jesus died for your sins and that you are forgiven. All right, that's very important. The second question today, when you become a child of God, you can ask for the Holy Spirit to fill you. What is one thing that God's Holy Spirit says to remind us that we have been adopted by God? I give you a clue. I said this at the very beginning of our time today. It's in Romans 8, 15. It says, Abba, Father. Abba simply means daddy. It's a real intimate term. It's a, it's a, a sweet term. It's a, a warm way of saying dad, okay? So the spirit within us, the Holy Spirit cries out within us, daddy, to God the Father. So you can call him daddy all right all right now we're going to turn to worship enjoy this and even as we worship you can even say in your heart to god you're my father you're my daddy holy spirit please fill me all right stand up and let's worship our god
now we're gonna end our time, but I just wanna remind you of our memory verse, okay? The memory verse says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a gift to us. It's a gift to us. And we can ask God to fill us with his Holy Spirit so he can help us, help us in many ways. He can help guide us. He can help us pray. He can help remind us that we are sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father. Alrighty, have a wonderful day. Um, we will see you hopefully at church soon. But if not, we'll see you next week online. Take care.